for a company like Marathon Tours, it's a dream job. It really is really the first innovator of combining running with travel. We started the Seven Continents Club. Okay. It's just amazing. It gives me goosebumps to think about the camaraderie that what we do brings together. We had a client that said it was St. Patrick's Day in Rome and they wanted the traditional Irish meal in Rome. Uh, when you get to a certain speed, hot wind speed, it's catabatic winds and it becomes a typhoon and the waves crashing over the front of that boat. I, I didn't have a quote unquote bucket list, but if I did, soaking in the Dead Sea and, and seeing all of these, I don't want to call them biblical, but they are biblical historical sites, you know, to go to Jeresh and see the, the best preserved Roman ruins outside of Rome. We just have so many different trips that we offer. Hi, Scott. Welcome to the show. How are you? I'm good, Susie. Thanks for having me. Um, it, it's a pleasure to be here and talk about what I love most, travel and, and running. Uh, yeah. To work for a company like Marathon Tours, it's a dream job. It really is. I've been fortunate for the last 21 years to, to do. It's not work. It's going to a place where I love every day and meeting clients like you, meeting new clients and exposing them to what we do. Um, Marathon Tour has been around since 1979, um, and that's our focus. We were really the first innovator of combining running with travel. Uh, Tom Gilligan started the company in 1979, still the owner and CEO, still very passionate about helping runners achieve their goals uh, of running around the globe, one stride at a time. It's our slogan here and, and we enjoy it. So uh, being a runner myself, uh, I was fortunate. I was probably one of the last runners uh, to complete the Abbott World Marathon Challenge uh, in New York in 2019. Uh, it was really the last Abbott World Marathon maybe right. to be held. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And I, I love that that was my last marathon uh, to finish on uh, in New York uh, and, and to gain that Abbott World Marathon major medal was fantastic for me. So continue running. Um, and I love it. So you have a fun job. Yeah. I, I can understand why you say it's, it's a dream job because um, how often do you get to go on the trips that you organize? Yeah, I manage, uh, and I say manage, I'm the trip contact. So when clients call in about specific trips, our agency is set up where we have trip managers that that answer questions about each of the trips. And I do about 12 of those trips. Uh, and I travel to about three or four of those uh, on an average year, three or four trips a year to see and experience the, the whole event with the clients themselves. Uh, but excuse me, having been on the trip before, it helps me to navigate with a group uh, to know where the places to go. Uh, and it, it kind of helps with the clients as well, knowing that they've got somebody they can trust and has been there and, and can help them out when, when they need it. Right. There's nothing better than experience on the ground. So oh, really I'm sure that comes in handy. So which, which countries, which trips do you manage? Um, I, I handle the Paris Marathon. Okay. First, a Bermuda Triangle Challenge, which is a unique event in January over Martin Luther King weekend. Um, wow. You combine the opportunity to run the Front Street Mile on Friday, 10K on Saturday, and then the half of the full on Sunday. So three marathons, it's all about the shirts and the bling, right? You get three shirts, <laughs> three medals. It's, it's a challenging weekend in Bermuda in January. It's a great escape to get away from the winter weather in Bermuda. It, it's just a fantastic place, easy to get to. Uh, so Bermuda, Paris, Petra Desert Marathon in Jordan, uh, Bagan Temple in Myanmar, Very Great Wall cool. Marathon in China, uh, Polar Circle in Greenland. Um, Holy smokes. Yeah, Volcano Marathon in Northern Iceland, the Ice Fjord Midnight Marathon uh, in Greenland. So there's two in Greenland, uh, which are fantastic. Those are both operated by Albatross Adventure Marathons out of Denmark. So we partner very closely with them with all of their events. So we do their big five marathon as well in South Africa. Um, we just have so many different trips that we offer. Um, this is just, so before I was a runner, my passion is traveling. So when I was, I'm not from the United States, I'm from um, Europe. So when you're in Europe, everything is very close. You can yeah. sort of like just go for the weekend to Rome or something like that. So I miss 
I told my husband, everything from here is a hike. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's like everything is just six plane, you know, six hours on a plane. So I miss that, you know, like ability to just say, okay, this weekend, or maybe not this weekend, but you know, next month, let's just do this. Um, yeah. Just pack and go. Um, so this is one of the things that I want to do when I retire. And one of my questions to you that I was thinking about before, um, when I was preparing for this. So my husband's not a runner. Okay. And well, you can't get him to run because he gets shin splints. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah that's <laughs> so, common. common. It's very <laughs> common. Yeah, yeah. He runs a mile and he gets shin splints for six months. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, that's right. No, we, we have families. We have families that travel with us. Uh, we have spouses or significant others that are non-runners. Uh, and there's enough built into our packages, enough freedom, but there's enough sightseeing. We don't differentiate between runners and non-runners. If you want to come with us, we're a fun group. Uh, we've had people that joined our safari comm trip uh, to Kenya, or now it's the Maasai Marathon trip. Uh, and they go, you know what, I, I don't run, but can I travel with you anyways? I, I just like you guys. I don't want to be eating my dinner at 4.30. I want things that are going to be active. You guys are very active. Can, can we book with you? So we encourage it. Absolutely. Bring a spouse along, bring a significant other along, runner or non-runner. For Great Wall Trip, it's a great one. They do an 8.5 kilometer race, a half marathon and a marathon. And it's included in the package price. So whether you run or not, there's no extra fee. It's just included in the package. So a lot of times we'll encourage that non-runner to do the run 8. 5 kilometer. <laughs> it's, it's more of a hike at that point. It's your experience to get up on the Great Wall of China. There's no other experience you're ever going to have than standing on the Great Wall of China. And the experience that you get, that sense of accomplishment as a non-runner non-runner at this point to cross that finish line and collect your first ever medal for for completing an 8.5 kilometer race on the great wall of china it's a pretty good hook it's a yeah. pretty good hook yeah so you don't have to run i mean there's plenty of trips that we do there's there's no running involved uh for the non-runners but we have support we need the, it's nice to see a friendly familiar face out on the course so we we will pick places along the course like paris marathon we'll have three or four different spots that are picked out to say these are reasonable spots or london marathon these are reasonable spots where you know if you take the t you can get out to this spot and see your significant other um, during the running race. right and to lighten up while you're running and see a familiar face you put a little pep in your step and go oh a little that's, faster. that's so, absolutely unbeatable when you see your your family it, it's it's unbelievable yeah it's like someone doped you <laughs> yeah. well, we also have the, the opposite of that too where we have people that are single that want to travel with us but they're i don't know i kind of like to do my own thing i don't want to share with a roommate you don't need to share with a roommate we have single rooms uh, but some people come with us and go i'm single but i don't want to pay that single supplement rate so we do a roommate match uh, where if we can find you same sex match uh, for a room and they're doing the same package, we'll match you up and save you a couple hundred dollars in that single supplement. So there's a, an appeal for single runners that, that kind of want to save a few dollars, but don't want to, I don't know, skimp on the package itself. So we can right. help you with that as well. And you find a new running roommate, if you're a running travel partner. Right. You make a friend. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you own the seven marathons and seven continents we we started the seven continents club okay. there are many iterations of that since that have challenged what we do but we were the original back in 1995 when we did the original the initial the first sporting event held in antarctica we did the antarctica marathon in 1995 on the way back across the drake passage a few of those runners said I've just run a marathon on all seven continents. So we took it upon there. Tom ran with it. And it's a great name, Seven Continents Club. Um, and it's it was initially that program was started for anybody who had that ambition or goal to run a marathon on all seven continents. If before that, it hadn't really been kind of verbalized or, or put into concrete. Now it is. Uh, a couple of years later, we instituted the half marathon Seven Continents Club because there are two different distances. Um, and in, in the last 10 years, that Seven Continents Club has, has really become our loyalty program. So whether you have the ambition to run on all seven continents or not, 
combining your passion for travel and passion for running, being a member of the Seven Continents Club with us gives you priority on those wait lists, gives you early access to those trips that come out early, like Berlin. Having that extra day, extra week to come up with that uh, and get that opportunity to get into these really sought after trips means a lot. Um, you know, when you complete that seven, um, it's a hundred dollar membership. It's a one-time lifetime, $100. We turn around and give you $25 worth of travel vouchers that you can use with Marathon Tours. So you really need a net cost is a hundred dollars. When you hit your sixth trip with us, we turn around and give you another hundred dollars worth of travel credits. So really your net cost is zero at that point. And then we have a handful of clients that have, have surpassed even 11 trips with us. And at that point, that's our gold level. Uh, and we turn around and give you another six value tickets for $25 that you can use towards trips. So now we've essentially paid you to be a member. So <laughs> as you get going, there's more and more of those benefits that kick in. But, uh, you know, the more you travel with us to borrow from American Express, membership has its privileges. Right. It really does. Membership will give you those extra leg up on the on the competition to get into these really sought after trips and get that goal of getting into the Abbott World Marathon majors a little bit quicker. Um, and and you have a website that's that's yours. You can tell your own story up there. It's really unique and and it's it's ever changing. And we're adding more benefits all the time and, and modifying the program to make it better for runners. So that's what right. we want to do. So. When, when you are going out on a trip, do you run the races or? Generally, I would run it at least the first time I go on the trip, uh, just so I can say I've run the event itself uh, and I can see the course. So when they, the following year, when, when new runners come in and I go, what's the course like? I can tell them firsthand. I ran it last year and I've seen this. This is where it gets really difficult. Petra. Wow, that's a tough one. You know, it, it, this mile, right from the beginning, you have a little switchback and it's, it's very hilly. It's going to be hot. There's very little shade. And at about mile 22, you've got a mile long hill. It's a mountain. Might as well be a mountain that you're climbing at that point. It's so late in the race. Uh, but it's knowing how to plan for the race accordingly. Uh, Great Wall, same thing. The, the first 5K is all uphill. Next 3K is on the wall itself. Come back down. You've got some main road, go out back. It, it, just knowing how the course is laid out lets you kind of plan accordingly to what you're going to train for. So yes, right. I do run the events at least the first year I'm on it. Um, but I'm, I prefer that. I've done eight marathons. Six of them have been the majors. Um, but half marathons are more, more my speed and my distance. I enjoy it much more. So if there's an opportunity to run a half or a full on the trip, I'll run the half because it gets me a chance to get back to the finish line and greet those marathon runners as well. So if they do have anything, right. um, at least the first time around, I'll run it. Uh, but we're not there at the end. If I've gone on the trip three or four times, I don't need to run the event again. I'm there as a liaison to the runners. So if they need assistance, the race can contact me or, or our staff and go, hey, we have one of your runners and they know where to find us. But if I'm at mile 18 or mile 22 they're never going to find me they won't know right because so you're running yeah. our, our main goal is to be there for the clients that's that's it so once we get the experience on the course everything else after that it's about the clients right right so one of the things i wanted to discuss was i get it a lot of times we do the expos is people walk by our booth and go oh my god I, someday i mean i'd love to go on your trip but it's i can't afford your trips well it's you can. I mean, we put together a comparison and we looked at New York City. New York City for four nights, the New York City Marathon, about $300 a night, $255 for the race entry, you know, $300 for meals and entertainment. You're looking at about $1,700 for the weekend for one person. Our Athens Marathon trip is four nights, includes daily breakfast, city tour, marathon tour staff, welcome reception, $720. Wow. So big difference. So I think there's a misconception that, you know, marathon tours, oh, they're so expensive. It's not that we're expensive. We have a great value for the package that we offer. So there's a lot of inclusions. It's not just saying, well, it's just hotel and entry. It's not where it ends. There's so much more to that. We, you know, like our Beijing trip, it's daily sightseeing, daily lunches, dinners, and, and lunch, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. 
all your gratuities to the local drivers and guides. So if someone's been on an escorted tour, you know, awkward moment at the end of the tour where the tour guide passed around an envelope or a hat and goes, <laughs> yes. you, know, you thought Johnny did a really good job. And it, <laughs> we saw that years ago and said, you know, some people would tip very generously and some people would go, you know what, I've got a few dollars left and you'd see two or three dollars, maybe five dollars for the entire week. Other people would tip a hundred dollars. It was very inconsistent. So we build in the gratuities to, to the trip. So it's one less thing you have to worry about when you're on the trip going, no, no, there's no hidden fees. It's already included. In it's really trip. all covered. Yeah. That's good. And, and I use Athens as an example, but I mean, we probably have a half dozen, if not more, a dozen trips that, that are in that same price range, but it's international. So why not go international? It's such a big world, so, so many different cultures to experience. Let's get out there and see them. Run those courses yeah. that you always wanted to see. Yeah, I am so into this. Like, this is my. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the good part about what we do, obviously, is is we combine all of those travel aspects together. Uh, as a full-service travel agency, we can help with airline tickets, you know, as far as getting you for, to the right airport. You know, a lot of cities have multiple airports. You know, Berlin oh, yeah. has a major one. They have a smaller one. Paris has a big one, and they have Orly, you know. So it's a matter of our knowledge that we put in there going, well, flying into this airport, this is the transportation you have for getting from the airport to the hotel, to downtown. We include the hotel. Our hotels are four or five star properties uh, at discounted rates. So you're getting a terrific property that's gonna be close to the finish line. You don't worry so much about how close it is to the start line because it's a common time everybody has to be there. So we include transfers when it's necessary to get people out to the start of the race. So you don't have to worry about how to get to the start of the race. We include daily breakfast. We include a welcome reception. So instantly that first night you're meeting other runners. So it's instantly that icebreaker of where are you from? Before you know it, Susie, we've got people that whether you're running your first marathon or your hundredth marathon, it's an equal admiration society where they're both looking at each other. I remember my first marathon. You're in for a treat. And the other person's in awe of that person going to run a hundred marathons. It's just amazing. It gives me goosebumps to think about the camaraderie that, what we do brings together, uh, you know, instantly, yeah. I don't want to travel alone. I, I'm worried about travel. You might fly there alone, but that first night you're going to meet somebody, you're going to meet hundreds of other people. You know, some of our trips are big, like Berlin and London. Some of the trips are small. Like I don't like big trips. I don't like big groups. We're not using big groups at this point. A lot of our groups are, you know, 35, 45 people. Uh, you know, we do our Paris marathon. It could be, it could be 80 people, but they're broken into two sections. You know, we have a marathon tours guide, like myself, that's been on the trip. They will help you answer those questions while you're there. Um, that's what we bring to the table. Is it's one-stop shopping. Make it easy for you're everybody. getting to shop. the guesswork out of. Yeah, because the way that you guys are doing it is that. For example, such as myself, if I am a busy professional and, mm -hmm. you know, you're working crazy hours, you don't have time to research anything. Even, I mean, going to Paris is not a complicated or going to Berlin, you know, it's first world. It's not complicated, um, but you don't have to worry about anything. You know, this is what, you know, I'm putting, you know, this is what I'm paying for. And they are going to do all the guesswork for me. I don't have to worry about finding a taxi or is this hotel a good hotel? They're going to be in a good place. No, yeah. you guys take care of all, all of that. Right. So it's the convenience. And we also get people on the opposite end. They're like, I like everything that's planned out. But other people come to us and go, I'm not really a big group person. I don't want to be told I have to get up at this time. And we're doing this today. A lot of our trips have that flexibility built into it. So you don't have to worry about we're doing this today. And you have to be part of mandatory attendance is not part of what we do right right um there are other trips that do mandate it and it's more because it's the convenience of getting around like the great wall marathon trip that we do that daily itinerary is all planned out we know what sightseeing you're going to see we know what restaurants you're going to go to not many people in beijing speak english so right. either you know mandarin you're kind of going around going, I think this is where I need it. We have local guides that speak the local language. We have a marathon tour staff person on the bus. Really, it makes it so you're going to see the best. If you picked up a photos guide and said, what are the top five things I have to see in Beijing? 
we're going to click them all off for you. You're going to see that. Plus, you get the guaranteed race entry. You don't have to worry about it. You're staying in a five-star hotel. Great wall package. It's the, the best of Western comfort meets Eastern culture. So right. you get the best of everything in that aspect. So Right. And the, the, I don't know how tourism is going to come back, how quickly it's going to come back, but I like traveling. And many times, if you are not prepared in advance, you're not seeing the things you want to see. Like if you go to Rome yeah. the day of, you're not going to get tickets to say the Coliseum. <laughs> it's like, it's right. just not happening. You're not going to see the Vatican and the Sistine Chapel. Event. You don't just show up and see the Sistine Chapel <laughs> right. anymore. Now, now right. particularly during a big marathon weekend like that, there's so many more people in, in the city for that event. And everybody right. wants to see those. So having a little bit of planning ahead of time, we can help you with all of those kind of things. Skip the line at the Vatican, skip the line at Sistine Chapel. We can help you with all of those things. We've been there. We've done it for you already. Um, right. Making recommendations. We had a client that said it was St. Patrick's Day in Rome, and they wanted a traditional Irish meal in Rome. Oh, wow. That's like, like, that's going to be tough. <laughs> so you can never find a bad meal in Rome. Uh, so we yeah. did find an Irish pub um, <laughs> that was right behind Santa Maggiore. Uh, we had a terrific bangers and mash uh, before. Yeah, it was, it, we find those things for you. So you, there's no, well, I can't say no. There's rarely anything that we can't help you with uh, to get reservations for. We can help you with that kind of thing. We help you with travel insurance. You know, at this point, we're looking a lot in the COVID era and how do you protect yourself moving forward? Insurance companies are there for that reason. They're not going to cover you specifically for COVID at this point, you know, at least not for fear of, you know, I don't want to go because I might catch, it. there's no policy that's going to cover you for that, but there are change your mind, uh, cover for any reason, uh, and they don't do 100%, but they cover 50 to 75% of what your trip cost is, so it's still a way to protect your travel dollars, even though you can cancel for any reason, it's, right. it's, it's certainly a good way to, to look at that. It's your baggage delay. It's lost baggage. The, a lot of them have a concierge service, 24 hours. So if you have something that you're over there, you're like, I'd really like to get tickets to go to see this, or I want dinner reservations. That insurance policy has concierge with it, and you just call them up and at 24-7, no matter where you are around the world. So right. it goes beyond that. So it's a good good thing to protect you. I think for um, complicated trips that have a lot of moving pieces, it's a given. So what's the craziest thing that has happened on a trip? Can you think of anything that? Yeah. A hurricane or a typhoon or I don't know, a sandstorm. Oh, oh, Antarctica <laughs> is one of those that's full of those adventure stories. I mean, it was, we had people up on the bow, uh, up on the, uh, the captain's deck uh, looking out and they were cheering for catabatic winds. Uh, when you get to a certain speed, hot wind speed, it's catabatic winds and it becomes a typhoon. And the waves crashing over the front of that boat were immense. They're just crazy. Some people love it. They love that experience of it. Other people are turned off by that. Um, we, you know, that's probably one of the craziest things uh, is because you just can't depend on the weather with Antarctica. You're going to get a little of everything while you're down there. Uh, the last Antarctica marathon we had one day was very sunny. Ideal conditions, probably the best we've ever had. And the following day, because we do two different ships back to back, the second day was a completely different race. It was snow, it was hail, the snow was coming down sideways. It was a completely different race. So you really have to really train and prepare for, for any aspect in that. Um, we had someone, and this, this kind of goes, why travel with marathon tours? What do you help with when you're on these trips? Uh, a couple of years back, we had someone on a Great Wall trip. We went to the Beijing Zoo to see the pandas. Always a popular thing. Um, and we didn't, she didn't realize it until she got back on the bus that her little fanny pack had been cut. And she remembered, oh my goodness, they had all of these people, the gypsies that wanted my picture taken. She's a beautiful blonde woman, American. So she just thought, well, they don't see very many people who look like me. And they really cut her fanny pack. They took her credit cards, her cash, and her passport. This was on a Sunday. Monday, we had to go to the consulate to get a new passport, a new China visa. Uh, Tuesday, she was leaving on Tuesday. So she oh, had wow. no credit cards, no money. She, she, a very seasoned traveler, but for some reason, she had taken her passport with her. Then we encourage people, you don't need your passport walking around. There's no country out there that's going to stop you. If China's not going to stop you and look for your passport, no. 
really nobody's going, but she knew she didn't need all her credit cards. She didn't need all her cash, but they took everything. And she got back to the hotel. And this is the best part. When you see a runner down, you help them. She was down. And I don't know how many runners came up to her and said, look, here's $20, here's $50, here's whatever you need, because she didn't have anything left. And she, if she had been on her own, it would have taken her a week to be able to secure the passport, the, just get in. The hotel wasn't going to keep her. She had no way to pay for the hotel. Uh, but within that 48 hour period, Monday right on to Tuesday at noontime, actually, so it was less than 48, we were able to get a new passport, get the visa, get her on her airline ticket to go home, all within basically 36 hours. So having been with us versus on your own, that's what we're there for. If I can't stress that enough that we're there to help you get through what you need. We had a, had a client that was in the hospital uh, and her daughter was in the hotel room. Um, and we had to be able to find that out. You know, it's important on the back of the bib, nobody does it, I don't think. I, I know I didn't do it before, but on the back of every bib, it's got your contact information, where you're staying, all of that. Just fill that out. It helps immensely when something goes on. So, um, so we what do you have scheduled for this year? Is there any anything happening right now? Yeah, Paris is still, uh, for, for this year, uh, through the end of the 2020, I think most of the events are, are off the table at this point. Uh, there'll be some smaller local events. Uh, I ran a half marathon three weeks ago in New Hampshire. Um, and they did a really great job uh, as far as organizing runners, spacing them apart, the start line, the finish line. All of it was well. I mean, it's been three weeks, so it wasn't considered a super spreader because there's not been any increase. So they did a great job on that. I know they have the Manchester City Marathon coming up next weekend. Um, the same company. So I assume they'll have the same results as far as keeping the, the spread down. Uh, right. But as far as big events, we don't have any left on the calendar. And Singapore canceled a while back. That was set for December. Pagan was in November. Uh, we had several that were in the events for the end of the year. Um, Havana, Queenstown, Athens. Those were all trips that we had planned for the end of the year. Um, right now, January has been out because Bermuda canceled about three weeks ago. So we'll get back to normal. We will. We've, you know, travel industry is resilient. We've seen other catastrophic events around the globe that have, have affected the ability to hold the race successfully. You know, whether that was Gulf Wars, H1N1, SARS, 9-11, there's been a lot of tumultuous things that have occurred in globally. Uh, and this is it's the thing. This is not a U.S. thing that's preventing us from traveling. It's global. You know, the events itself are being canceled for the safety of anyone coming in. So once we get that, we'll get back to normal, if we call it, call it normal or not. But we'll get back to traveling and get back to running on, on foreign streets. Uh, internationally <laughs> uh, soon and you know, we're looking forward to it so I have the feeling and this is just my gut which I could be extremely wrong but I have the feeling that the more off the beaten path races are going to come back sooner than the your big ones like your Paris is your like I think a Petra marathon that might have a thousand people is going to come back sooner than a Paris that has 45,000 and I but that's only my gut. So. And I think what's going to happen is it's not just that. I mean, a lot of people are putting all their eggs in one basket going, I want to do the majors. I want to get those done. The demand for those isn't going anywhere. It's only going up. Right. So it's been delayed another year. It's been delayed another year. That demand for those Berlin marathons, London marathons is very high. That's going to overflow into those secondary markets like Paris, like Rome. And those are going to be just as busy, if not busier, like you just said. And it's, it's going to transition over to those adventure races uh, that might be off the beaten path. Well, all right, I'll do, I'll do Berlin, but in the meantime, I still have to do an event this year. Maybe I'll do the Volcano Marathon in Iceland uh, or the Ice Fjord Midnight Marathon in Greenland, something that's uh, Petra. Uh, I, I love Petra. It, it's going to be one of those races that is obscure, uh, that is a little bit off the beaten path and not your traditional road race that it appeals to people. It's not everybody likes to run on the roads anymore. You know, there's some people just love to run trails. And also there's so many people who've done everything already, or do you know, yeah. like, it's like ticking. It's like, what, which one is there that's different? 
So in terms of Greenland, I, yeah. I didn't know you had actually races in Greenland, but what's yes. with Greenland? Because you have two, right? <laughs> two or three? <laughs> well, Polar Circle had been the initial race. Um, and, and it's organized and held and managed by Albatross Adventure Marathons out of Denmark. Uh, popular trip, but it's limited as far as the accommodations go. So it, it really is a first come first serve. It sells out very quickly. So as much as the majors will sell out because of the demand, I think we talked about this, that, that demand is going to flow over into the smaller events, the adventure events, where it might not have been your, your key location to go to or the race that you were thinking you're going to do, but you might transition to these adventure races. In Greenland, it's just beautiful. Uh, you know, it, Greenland's ice, Iceland's green, it's, it's green. So their initial polar circle in October, that event, uh, they would do frostbite checks. So you have to have really some winter gear. So the folks that are coming from warmer climates like Arizona and Texas, it's a bit of a stretch for them. You know, in New England, that could be a Wednesday in January for us. It, you know, it's no different, but they do, because those winds come right off the glacier, uh, it really chills that air down and they do frostbite checks throughout the course, but they, it's unique. They do the marathon on Saturday and usually the, the half marathon on Sunday. So you can do what they call the polar bear challenge. So you could do two races in one weekend and get three medals again, which is, is kind of neat that way. Uh, right. They found the popularity of polar circle. Uh, Greenland's beautiful year round. So it, in June, uh, they have the Ice Fjord Midnight Marathon because it's still light out at nine o'clock at night at midnight. What a unique time to go to Greenland and experience that. So it's that takes place in the area of the extension for the Polar Circle Marathon. So they have the core package and the extension and out in Illicit, that's where they're gonna have the, the Midnight Sun um, Marathon out there. So very unique. And again, it's gonna be limited because of hotel space. Right. Which one is your favorite? Ooh. This is like choosing in between kids. It's, this is like choosing your favorite kid. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it's, it's hard to really say because each time I go, it's, it's so different because the clients make the trip for me. Um, right. you know, a lot of times you're like, how many times can you go to Paris and see the same thing? And, you know, Eiffel Tower, which is, it's, it's not my experience. It's me getting to share your first experience with those again. Uh, but I think the trip that surprised me and I enjoyed the most was Petra Desert Marathon. You know, I had this preconceived notion, Middle East, Jordan, geez, my parents were like, I'm sure, I don't know if I want you to go there. <laughs> I can assure you it was, the Jordanian people are so hospitable. They're so welcoming. As soon as you walk off the plane, uh, the entire time we were there, never had to worry about safety. I talked to the single women there on the trip. They said the same thing. They're like, I never felt uncomfortable. I never felt, you know, any different than being back home in my own house. It was so easy to walk around and the trip is well organized. Uh, the, the race itself is a challenge. I mean, if you start very early, but you start in front of the treasury. It's iconic to have a, a start line right there and then run through the Petra Desert. Yeah, soak in the oh, Dead I, Sea. I, I didn't have a quote unquote bucket list, but if I did, soaking in the Dead Sea and, and seeing all of these, I don't want to call them biblical, but they are biblical historical sites, you know, to go to Jeresh and see the, the best preserved Roman ruins outside of Rome. It's, Jeresh was amazing. Uh, to see the baptism site, to soak my feet in the Jordan River. It, it, there's so Mount Nebo, you know, Moses looking out. There's so many things about Jordan that were fantastic. Sleeping out under the stars in the desert. Um, it was amazing. I, I would recommend Petra for anybody. It, it definitely was an easy trip. To, it's a long flight, but once you get there, it's worth staying. Yeah. But when I was growing up, I saw um, Indiana Jones, was it it's the last crusade? Yes. It's Petra. And I was like, it I is. want to go there. I think I was 16 or 17 when that movie came up. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. You get a lot of people that, that end up riding the camels right in front of the treasury. Uh, and I, I've been three times and every time I'm there, I hear it at least once is we named the dog Indiana. Because right at the end of the movie, that's what he says where they ride off. And it's, but yeah, the, the treasury right there when, when he goes in, 
Uh, the tomb doesn't look anything like that. You can't go in the tomb and it's it's more like a huge bank vault than anything else, but there's nothing behind it. But it was, they're still amazing. Petra at night, they have it all lit up with candles. So you walk the whole the whole canyon to seek to get out there. Uh, and then it's lit up and they play local music and tell local stories. What an experience. I mean, to yeah. see Petra lit up at night, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. See, that's something that it would, I like places with, some kind of a history behind them. So yeah. Greenland, you, I mean, the way you're describing it sounds amazing, but if I only could do one, that's the one I would do, Petra. Yeah. Well, Bagan was equally as great. Uh, I hadn't known much about Myanmar again, uh, formerly known as Burma. So, you know, you, you get there and they, Albatross has done a great job of picking some unique locations to run their events. Uh, and Myanmar was one of those for the Bagan temple, the run to 2000 temples. It's just the hot air balloons in the morning when they're going off, just the culture, everything about that trip was fantastic as well. I and mean, a lot of people get afraid of, she said, I don't know about the food. I'm gonna worry about the food when I get there. Great Wall, we get that a lot. Like, I don't like Chinese food. I'm like, you don't like Chinese American food. <laughs> there's, there's, there's no General Gao's chicken. There's no sweet and sour on the table. You're not getting any of that when you get over to China. Uh, it's, it's definitely a very different cuisine when you get there, but it's, clean and it's, it's good it's filling it's, yeah the adventure part i love I, I love to be able to combine the sightseeing and the adventure with the event itself but you can do that in big cities as well berlin was amazing uh, i thought being yeah. able to see the berlin wall uh you know there's still part of it that's up there and see the line of embarkation running through potsdamer platz yeah it puts it into perspective that there's a bigger world out there and, and to yeah. see it running puts it in a very different perspective as well. Different view seeing it, so. Yeah, I, you know, my son, he's 16, he doesn't run. But he always says, why do you like running so much, like races? And I always tell him, because you're in Philadelphia, for example, Philadelphia Marathon. They stop the traffic for you to run in the middle of the street. Like, where, yeah. where are your options of doing that? Never. Or yeah. New York City or Chicago, you know, like they, everybody, it's just the runners. So you see in the city, it's like you own the city. Yeah, yeah, Otherwise well, you wouldn't be able to run, you know, like you could walk on the sidewalk and there's a bunch yeah. of other people, but this way you, it's like you're soaking in the experience. It's, it's one of the only sports where I think you get to do the same exact thing that the elite runners, yeah. professional runners, get. you're not going to get on the parquet floor at the Boston Garden. You're not going to get on the field and play with the Patriots. Most right. people will never experience that. So to be able to run the same course as the elites, the professionals get to do, I think that puts it in a different perspective as well. That, you know, like you said, they're closing the streets down for me to run through the streets. That's pretty special. That's yeah. pretty special. And people cheer you on that yeah. who don't know you i mean if i were to play tennis no one's going to cheer me on <laughs> <laughs> running a marathon you yeah. know people cheer me on they don't know me but yeah. it's, you know i i love that it, we come in all shapes and sizes you know it, there's if you run you're a runner that's as simple as it gets you know yeah. there there's certainly you know i i'm a finish line kind of guy, not a finish time kind of guy. I go from the start, I'm going to get to that finish line. I will do it. It might take me a little longer, but at the end, I'm going to be out there. And it's amazing the, the tenacity for folks to be out there for five, six, seven, you know, eight hours. That's a long day. That's a, that's a day at the office for most people. And to consider they're moving right. for six or seven hours, that's, that's a lot. The longer you're out there, in my mind the more I admire the person. Like I have a friend, she does her marathons in six and a half hours. So, you know, you have to be really tough to mm. <laughs> be out there <laughs> running for six and a half hours because you're moving. I mean, it's exercise. Yeah. It's like, it's amazing. It is. Like, it is. And then there's something to be said for people who keep doing it, who don't mind that time, you know, like... Yeah. I just do it because I like running and I like crossing the finish line. I don't care the time, yeah. you know, what's, what time I'm finishing. In, so it is, it's, it's unique to be able to, 
to watch those folks. And for years, you know, the first couple of years I worked here, I wasn't a runner as far as half marathons and marathons. Uh, but I would go on the trips and I would be at the finish line cheering them on. And I would see that absolute sense of accomplishment that these people, I don't know their story, but whatever got them to get to that start line and make it to that finish line is just, I needed that. I wanted it. And when I first got it, I'm like, I get it. This is amazing. Yeah, yeah. It, it really, it's, it's more of a lifestyle. It's not a hobby. It's a lifestyle choice when you go out to do these. So yeah. now I applaud anybody that gets out there, whether you're two and a half hour or sub two and a half and eight hours. That's to do 26.2 miles. Yeah. yeah. Or 13.1 or three <laughs> or, or 10 K whatever it is you that you want out there to do. Yeah. You beat whoever's on the couch. So, well, this was awesome. Well, I, I hope that you've got information out there. Again, there's so much out there to do. Uh, and, you know, we appreciate the opportunity to share our knowledge and what we put together for everyone. We want to make it as easy as possible for folks to, to meet their running goals and, you know, goals change all the time you know, find a new finish line, we'll help you get there. Um, you know, the, right. there are so many trips out there that we want to get back on there and, and see, but we're introducing new trips all the time. So, you know, each year we have our country club survey that goes out and we, we poll clients and they tell us where they want to go. So if it's not on the event calendar, tell us where you want to go. Maybe we'll add it next year. Uh, but, you know, the core, core trips, the Abbott World Marathon majors, Antarctica, our Madagascar trip, talk about adventure oh that sounds amazing Madagascar so there are so many great adventure trips that we can put out there for you um no we look forward to the opportunity to to help people get those running goals right if people want to connect with you where can they find you visit Mm -hmm. Uh, www.marathontours.com there's a trip there it's got a calendar of events uh, Seven Continents Club is also worth checking out. Uh, it gives you more information about our loyalty program and what those benefits are. But marathontours.com, give us a call, 617-242-7845. We're here in the office. Um, <laughs> and we are the official agency for the Boston Marathon as well. So if you're looking for housing, uh, for hotel space for Boston, uh, generally our rates are 30 to 40% less than what the hotels themselves are charging. So we've been affiliated with the BAA for a long time and we're able to get those great rates uh, for runners coming in. So keep us in mind coming in for that in, in Chicago, New York. We're here. We're here for the guys to go to. Awesome. The world opens. We're here. (laughs) Very nice. Susie, I appreciate this. It was a pleasure to have you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Bye-bye.